Pinch your nose and hold your breath as we jump in and join Kim and Danny Stricker within the sparkling water of Lake Ontario. Man, this water looks great with all the light coming through and everything. I love it out here. I agree, this is such a great place to come. I love diving here. I've got to get a shot of these gobies. They're just everywhere. I mean, that's how it is in the Great Lakes. Yeah, get some good close-ups of those, Danny. I'll, I'll look for some more fish. But right now, Dan, it seems like the fish are hanging up to the edge a little more. Now the edge of the weeds or the edge or where the where it starts to drop off from that rocky hump that's over there. The edge where it starts to drop off is basically where you start picking up the milfoil. And they seem to be working along that little that little eight to ten foot edge. Well that's where we had the majority of our action today. That seemed to be where they were at, was right where that little bit of a drop was. There are gobies all over the bottom. Danny, how's those cool stuff going? I'm trying not to move right now. I got some really good shots here. You always do. What I'm looking at right now, you see the little rhizome? These little roots. That's how this billfoil spreads. When this breaks off, that will float off knowledge going on today. I got over 10 bass in front of me right now. They're all just standing looking at me. This is the coolest thing. <laughs> I can see those fish from up here. Dad, it was so wild. They just kept coming at me. The next thing you know, they all grouped up right in my face. All on top of each other. How big were those fish, Dan? Are they good size? I mean, they, they actually range from two pounds to three and a half, I'd say. It was awesome. And then Dean came by and they left. <laughs> <laughs> I can still see them up here. Yeah, I'm waiting for you to run across one of those big six pounders that are roaming around down there. Are you seeing as many gobies out here on this edge as you were back in when we were in by the weeds and that big flat in there? That's a good question. And my answer is just like it was before. <laughs> there are gobies everywhere. Thousands of them. Everywhere you look, I don't care where you are, there's gobies. And so are the big smallmouth eating. Well, that sure is what's making them bigger. ecosystem beneath the surface is indeed a multifaceted neighborhood, which many fishermen fail to recognize. Let's check in with the professor and see what he has to offer. Professor Gerald R. Smith is the curator of fishes at the University of Michigan Museum of Zoology. One of the important things that uh, uh, 
anglers often miss is just how complicated and how abundant the community is of, uh, that makes up the food chain for, for a bass, for example. So you have fish that feed on the bottom like the suckers, uh, minnows and alewives and things that feed in midwater. All of these things provide babies uh, that some size bass somewhere are just the right size to eat. And so it's really important to have all, the, all those uh, native species that make up the food chain around in order to grow up large bass. Of course, something gets introduced like the round goby, and for years we thought that was a pest. We've seen that somehow the bass have caught on and they're eating them in abundance and growing bigger and more abundant than ever before. So this thing that we regarded as a pest, and it's still kind of a still an introduced pest that we'd rather not have, but it's interesting to see how it's been integrated into the food chain with the help of learning on the part of smallmouth bass. The fish. All right. <laughs> and it ain't no shabby fish either. Oh, Good man. going, Dean. Is in the air. They, tear, they just tear it up. It's unbelievable how strong they are. Come on up for the camera. There we go. There it nice. is. Nice. You're the man. Beautiful. Sweetheart right there. Nice fish. No question. <laughs>